everyone, I'm here to talk about inventory, that is India's 2. According to India's 2, inventory are items which are held for resale in the ordinary course of business. For example, clothes, watches, etc. In the process of production, uh, example, cotton which is used in the manufacture of clothes which is a finished goods. Uh, materials which are used in rendering services. Inventory does not include, the definition of inventory under India's 2 does not include financial, financial instruments like debt instruments or equity instruments, biological assets like animals and agricultural produce at the time of harvest. Inventory can include three items that is raw materials, work in progress and finished goods. Raw materials are those items which are basic materials which are used in converting them into final products. Work in progress are partially finished goods which are awaiting completion. Finished goods are those items which are completed in terms of manufacturing and which are ready to be sold. Measurement of inventory. Inventory is measured at cost or NRV whichever is lower. So these are the following components of cost. Cost includes all purchase costs which are, direct, which are, which are nothing but uh, raw material costs. Cost of conversion, that is the conversion costs which are incurred for converting the raw material into finished goods. For example, machine operating cost, labor, etc. And other costs which are directly involved in getting the inventory to the current, uh, current location and condition. That includes transportation charges. Less trade discounts, if any, which are given by the supplier of raw materials. And duty drawbacks, if any. So when we subtract these two, we arrive at the cost of the inventory. All purchase cost also includes non-refundable taxes and duties. Uh, refundable taxes and duties cannot be included in it because it can be recovered later. For example, if you are purchasing uh, from a supplier and there is GST on it, which can be recovered later, hence it cannot be included in the purchase cost. The second component of cost is cost of conversion. Cost of conversion are of two types, that is actual cost and production over it. Actual costs are the costs which are direct, like direct raw materials, direct labor. Production overheads. Production overheads can be divided into two types, that is fixed overheads and variable overheads. Fixed overheads are those expenses which are incurred irrespective of the quantity produced. For example, factory management costs, factory rent, etc. which do not vary with the quantity produced. Variable overheads are those expenses which vary directly with the quantity produced. So for example, uh, you have indirect material and indirect labor. So here the labor cost, let's take an example where the labor cost is rupees 5 per unit. Units which are produced are 100. So since it is a variable overhead, it, it is directly absorbed on the units which are produced which are 100. Therefore the total labor cost will be 100 into rupees 5, that is 500 which are absorbed into the cost of the inventory. Absorption of fixed overheads. Absorption can be of two types where actual capacity is lesser than the normal capacity or actual capacity is greater than the normal capacity. So in the first case, let us consider an example. In this case, normal capacity is 5000 units, actual capacity is 4000 units, factory rent that is rupees 10,000 which is the fixed over it. So the cost per unit which can be absorbed into the inventory will be 10,000 that is the cost divided by the normal capacity that is 5,000 that gives us rupees 2 per unit. If we consider the actual capacity then 10,000 divided by 4,000 that will be 2.5. So since the actual capacity is lesser than the normal capacity it means that the production was inefficient and if we consider the same the cost will go up to 2.5. Hence, we cannot consider that because we cannot consider our inefficiency as a cost. Hence, it should be excluded from the inventory. Uh, in the second case, actual capacity is greater than the normal capacity. For example, actual capacity in this case is 10,000 units. Normal capacity is 5,000. Factory cost, that is the fixed over it, is 20,000 rupees. So, the cost that can be absorbed here will be 20,000 divided by 10,000, which is the actual capacity. Here, we are considering actual capacity because the production was efficient and the manufacturing happened at a good level and the units are 10,000. So, the cost will be reduced, that will become 2 per unit. If the normal capacity was considered, that is 5,000, the cost would have been rupees 4. So, since the actual capacity is giving us a reduction in cost, hence actual capacity is considered. Methods of valuation of inventory. The first method is FIFO, that is first in, first out. 
FIFO is the commonly used method for valuation of inventory which assumes that the goods which are manufactured or purchased first are sold first. Hence, always the new goods which are bought later remains in stock. To understand FIFO, we have an example here. So, opening balance, 100 units which were purchased at a cost of rupees 5. So, the total amount of inventory was 500. Further purchases which were made during the year, the, again 100 units, which were purchased at a different cost that is rupees 10. So, the total amount of inventory will be 1500. Sales which were made during the year. As per FIFO, the goods which are manufactured or purchased first are to be sold first. Hence, the 100 units out of the opening balance are sold first. Hence, those costs will be 100 into 5, that is 500. For the remaining 50 units, purchases which are made later, from those 100 units, 50 are sold. So, 50 into 10, that is 500. So, the inventory on hand will be always of the later uh, purchases. Hence, 50 is valued at rupees 10. So, that is 500. The second method of inventory valuation is weighted average cost method. So, in this method, uh, we assume a weighted average cost which will determine the amount which will go into COGS and inventory. To understand how weighted average cost is arrived at, let's consider this example. So, weighted average cost per unit is derived by the total cost of goods available for sale divided by the total quantity of goods which are available for sale. So, in this example, there is an opening inventory of, of 100 units which are uh, recorded at rupees 5, that is total amount to 500 rupees. Further purchases which are made at rupees 10 of 100 units recorded at rupees 1000. So, the total cost of goods which are available for sale will be 1000 plus 500 that is 1500 and the total goods which are available for sale will be 100 plus 100 that is 200. So, further sales of rupees 150 units are to be made. So, at what cost should this 150 units be recorded at? So, weighted average cost per unit will be the total cost of goods available for sale that is opening inventory cost of rupees 500 and the purchase cost of rupees 1000 that is 1500 and the total quantity of goods which are available for sale that is 100 plus 100 that is 200. So, we arrive at a weighted average cost of rupees 7.5 per unit. So, this sales, uh, sales of 150 units is measured at a cost of rupees 7.5. And the remaining inventory that is 100 plus 100, 200 minus 150 that is 50 is also measured at the weighted average cost of 7.5 that gives us an amount of rupees 375. The third method of inventory valuation is standard cost method. The standard cost method refers to an estimated or predetermined cost of performing an operation or deciding the cost of a manufactured good. Standard cost method is also often used as target cost against the actual cost and the standard costs are developed over a period of time using historical data from time to time. The fourth method of valuation is retail method. Retail method refers to a technique for arriving the cost of inventory as of a period end. So the cost of inventory can be found out in the following way. So you can consider the retail price of the inventory minus the gross margin of the component which will give us the closing value of inventory as on the period end. As we already know that inventory is valued at NRV or cost whichever is lower. NRV is nothing but net realizable value. So we can arrive at NRV in the following way. Estimated selling price of the inventory less cost of completion of the inventory and less cost to make sales which will give us the value of NRV. In cases where NRV can be lower than cost, it can be due to increase in cost or decrease in the selling value or it can be due to obsolescence of inventory or it can be due to errors in production. For example, let's consider the cost of the inventory to be 100 and the NRV to be 90. So now the inventory has to be valued at lower of cost or NRV, hence the inventory is valued at NRV. When the same goods are sold, the difference between the cost and NRV has to be recognized in the PNL as an expense in the same year in which the goods are sold. With this, we come to the conclusion of the topic. Thank you.